Hello, my name is David Bent and I am the Director of Sustainable Business at Forum for the Future. I'm recording this video to give a bit of an introduction into sustainability which can be used in the focus groups which I know are going on within the group. This focus group is part of a wider project to build an integrated long-term sustainability strategy for MAS Holdings. What we mean by a long-term sustainability strategy is something which will help MAS Holdings be more successful in the future because of issues to do with environmental limits, social political foundations and essential needs have been addressed and we'll unpack more of that as we go through the slides. The point of this session is to engage you as experts and people with insight about MAS as a business and the situation it faces, to engage you to get more of those insights and to create some successful change. Um, as an overall session, there will be um, some questions which will follow this video, looking at today, looking at the future, and articulating for you the next steps. What this video will cover is just the introduction and framing of what is it that we mean by sustainability. So here it is, the quick introduction to sustainability. And this is the classic definition that sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This uh, definition comes from uh, something called the Brundtland Commission, which was done in um, 1987. Uh, and the point about it is to say that it is about people, firstly, that it is about meeting their needs, uh, and doing so in a way that doesn't harm others. So it is a classic um, like liberal position of giving people choice, but your choices cannot harm the choices of other people. And the reason why this is important for businesses is because we think that a sustainability is affecting business performance. The trends that I'll talk about in a second are affecting business drivers, and those business drivers are affecting business results. The key question is, how will your business be more successful in the future when that future is going to be deeply affected by the trends of climate change, resource scarcity, labour shortages, population growth, and so on. Now it's worth looking at what is it that might constitute a sustainable future? How would you know that you are there? Now in order to do that, we worked with some businesses here in the UK to unpack what are the boundary conditions for a sustainable future? What defines the limits? And there's several different parts to this. On the outside, in blue are the environmental boundaries and what we're saying here is that whatever the future economy is like for it to be sustainable it needs to be within the environmental boundaries that keep our planet in good health. One of the example of that which I've half mentioned already is climate change. If we allow the climate to go more than two degrees warmer than the pre-industrial level then we risk uh, runaway climate change. We risk the, that warming getting higher and higher, even up to six degrees or more, and that would have a devastating impact on our, the ability of the planet to support nine billion people. As a different sort of uh, example, something like biodiversity, uh, that biodiversity, which means the um, range and variety of plants, animals, and more in the natural world, that biodiversity provides us with um, a great service of protecting us from disease, of giving us um, many things that we eat and drink and use in our daily lives. And if we destroy it and undermine that biodiversity by making lots and lots of species extinct, we remove from ourselves and the future generations the possibility of using those different species for our own ends. Now, the, the middle circle, the one in red, is about the social and political foundations that we must protect and grow to enable our societies to flourish. We take one example here, um, income. If, people ha if there's too much of a gap and difference in people's income, then the social and political foundations are uh, undermined. Uh, a different sort of example, trust. Trust is uh, crucial to any society. If there's not enough trust, then there will be um, instability, there will be insecurity, there will be uh, 
and uh, make it much more difficult for people to meet their needs. And that takes me finally to the innermost circle, um, which is that in a sustainable economy, we would ensure access to the essential needs we each need in order to survive and thrive. And things here are healthcare, nutrition, access to energy, access to shelter, access to clean water and sanitation. All of those things are necessary for uh, anyone to um, continue for them to be alive and be healthy and happy uh, and part of the point in a way of having strong uh, social and political foundations uh, and being within environmental limits is that we can meet the needs of the 9 billion people that we estimate will be around in 2050. So if those are the boundary conditions, what are the trends that are taking us over those boundaries, taking us beyond the environmental limits, undermining the social and political foundations, and making it harder to meet those essential needs. Now, many of these trends laid out in this slide might be very familiar to you, but it's worth pulling them together to really emphasise how important they are to the prospect of a sustainable future. So many of these will be have been experiencing directly, so something like population growth and urbanisation. In Sri Lanka, there has been population growth and a massive move in recent times, from a rural setting to people living in cities. Uh, the top middle there of increasing climate change, I've already touched on how important climate change might be if there's runaway climate change. But even so, even with um, the climate change that is currently locked in and likely to happen, there'll be more extreme weather events. Be, those extreme weather events are likely to affect the tropical belt to so places like Sri Lanka much more than places like the UK. Many companies, and I'm sure this is true for MAS Holdings too, since the early 2000s have experienced a massive increase in raw material costs. Resource scarcity and price volatility has meant that um, uh, for so many um, inputs and commodities they've doubled in price in the last 10 or 15 years. Other big trends I'd pull out for you, the shifts in global economic activity, um, this is where China, India, Brazil, these are places which are now becoming richer and therefore they are being able to demand more, and more and more of your business is moving to those parts of the world. As places which have previously been undeveloped are developing, and they are getting richer, so the labour costs there rise, and that's something which has been experienced in Sri Lanka, Vietnam, and elsewhere. And then if we look at the bottom right, when it comes to radical transparency, it's now so much easier for someone anywhere in the world to understand what's happening somewhere else, because a photo has been taken on a smartphone and shared via social media. And that sort of radical transparency means that things which used to be away behind a corner and ignorable are now much more available to anybody to see. All of those big trends, which are taking us beyond the limits and taking us away from a sustainable economy, are creating problems for business. And so it's important for a business to try to become sustainable so it can be successful in the future. But that prompts the question, well, what do we mean by a sustainable business? Well, for us here at Forum, a sustainable business achieves commercial success by delivering social value within environmental limits. And the leading businesses do that by shifting the wider system as well so that others can be more sustainable and so that they can be, they the business that is, can be successful in a more sustainable world. This uh, perspective fits within Forum's view about how change happens and why it's so important for business to be part of that change. We believe that if you look at any large shifts across uh, history, you can roughly break them down into these six steps. Experiencing the need to change, a small group turning that into a diagnosis of what's going on in the system, some experimentation that creates pioneering practices, those pioneering practices becoming more and more successful, joining together and enabling some sort of tipping point, that tipping point being sustained into creating a transition for a wide proportion of players, and when they have all moved, that sets the rules of the new mainstream. And we think it's important in a sustainable development context to make lots of efforts to have shifts like this, significant changes like this, 
so that we can have sustainable businesses be more successful in many, many sectors around the world. An example of a business which is trying in that kind of way is Unilever, and they have one of the, the most ambitious, one of the most prominent global sustainability uh, approaches called the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan. The top left gives you the three big, hairy, audacious goals of the USLP, as it's known. The Unilever will help a billion people to improve their health and well-being. It will halve the environmental footprint of their products. And it will source 100% of its agricultural raw materials sustainably. So why have they selected those three things? Well, on the one billion people improving their health and well-being, this is something which is addressing an essential need for water and sanitation and health. But at the same time, it's part of the core business of Unilever to sell soap and to sell other things which people, mean people have access to water and sanitation. So helping one billion people improve their health is a way of um, both creating a, be a better world, a more sustainable world, and of Unilever itself being more successful. Now, one of the consequences of that success could be an increased environmental burden, taking us further out beyond the environmental limits, and that explains why they've gone for the second big hairy audacious goal of halving the environmental footprint of their products. This takes us to the diagram in the bottom left. Unilever wants to, wanted to double its revenue from, in 2008, 40 billion, to 80 billion in 2020, to double that revenue, but without increasing the amount of environmental impact, and hence halving the environmental footprint of each product. That allows them to deliver change and deliver a better, more hygienic, um, healthier world with people with more well-being without increasing the environmental burden. And when it comes to the third of their big targets, sourcing 100% of their raw materials sustainably has a number of different causes. One is they are uh, worried about security of supply. If your agricultural supply chain fails because of extreme weather events, because of soil depletion, because of different ways in which we might go beyond the environmental limits, if your supply chain fails, then they, you have nothing to sell. So it's important to source sustainably from a security of supply point of view. It also is helpful because it um, provides a better income and a better um, result for the farmers themselves and as they get richer they themselves can become customers of Unilever. So what's behind all of those three goals is generating uh, a more sustainable future in which Unilever can be more successful and that takes us to the final diagram on the right. They have thought about their um, business case in terms of in green cost, leverage and efficiency, so they produce less waste and have less risk, using the savings from that to drive innovation and marketing, that innovation and marketing driving profitable volume growth, and that sustainable led growth completes the virtuous circle by allowing them to go for ever greater efficiency. And that is their um, route to making the sustainable living plan something which delivers a more sustainable world, which is good for everybody, and does that in a way which delivers a more sustainable, a more durable, a more successful Unilever, which is good for their shareholders. And with that, I will end. Um, the key thing, key points I was trying to get across in this presentation were that um, sustainability is affecting the future of your business because we are going beyond the environmental limits, we're undermining social and political foundations, and we're making it harder to address essential needs. But, as in the example of Unilever, a sustainable business is one that is achieving commercial success by delivering social value within environmental limits and therefore is helping to be more successful in a more sustainable world. A sustainable business is able to answer the question, how will you be successful in a world dominated by these big sustainability-related trends? And with that, I hand over to um, your colleagues to explore what that means for MAS Holdings.